Greeting spam. During the holidays, we get lots of food and usually after a feast, we instinctively fast and clean out the system or do what we call a detox. We use the detox terminology, but what you have to understand is the body is always detoxing. That's part of its natural living cycle. This is why you eliminate waste every day without fail. If you don't eliminate daily, that's almost an immediate problem. Acne pops up on the body because toxins in the blood are being attacked by the body's detox system. Boils, abscesses, benign growths, those are the extreme measures and powers of the natural detoxing the body is performing daily. That is your proof of the detox naturally in process by the body. What happens more often than not is our intake um, impedes the body's ability to efficiently detox or we overload it to the point that it can't perform detoxification much beyond the digestive waste cycle. Examples of this are when we eat lots of breads, pastas, white flours, and other foods that cause a really thick mucus film to cover the, the digestive tract over time. This film is a mixture of your body's mucus and the pasty remnant food debris not yet cleared out by the GI tract. This can also be in conjunction with food that causes an overproduction of mucus, like soft cooked eggs, cheese, soda, etc. Now the first thing this thick lining does is it hinders the amount of minerals your small intestine can absorb. Now remember, we know that the small intestine is where most of the mineral and nutrient absorption comes from. So conversely, this is also where the mineral and nutrient deficiencies occur and cause an array of issues if we have this lining blocking nutrient absorption. Now as this condition worsens, the large intestine gets infected. And even though most of the mineral absorption happens in the small intestine, the large intestine is where most of your intestinal gut flora lives. And one of the most important things that your gut flora does is to protect you from the proliferation of bad gut bacteria, all right, or bad bacteria. Your intestines are the perfect breeding ground for bacteria. So if you're not growing good bacteria, you're growing bad bacteria. Okay, it's either or. This is why it's important to be consistent with healthy intake. Candida is a generic word for the many species of gut bacteria that cause problems in the body. Now we know sugar is the delicacy that candida yeast loves to feast on. And like any other thing that consumes, the more it eats, the more it grows. Hence why we need to minimize our sugar intake, which includes simple carbs as well. Tiredness is one of the major and first signs of candida issues, or bad gut bacteria in general. Now this, is, this usually happens in conjunction with um, a pasty tongue with a thick yeast. Um, the buildup happens on the back part of the tongue and then starts to creep towards the front. Another sign of gut flora imbalance is IBS issues, or irritable bowel syndrome, where you have frequent cramping, diarrhea, or constipation. And in the case of diarrhea, the large intestine is not siphoning water from the digested matter properly because as we know, the large intestine is where uh, any remaining liquid in the GI tract is absorbed. For women, it's much easier to regulate the gut flora and to see what's happening with it. Since any yeast proliferating in the female body generally shows up in the form of a vaginal discharge. Now you may hear people giving standards of how often you should eliminate or eat or other operations of the food cycle. But by now we all know it all depends on your particular physiology and your body, your regimen. I've read in medical journals that the body takes four to five hours to digest food. That's ridiculous in my estimation because the body 
doesn't even really secrete ghrelin, the hormone that signals hunger, until your eating cycle has finished. So unless you eat every five to six hours, that's probably not you. If you work out, you know that you're hungry um, after a two hour stretch, three hours at the most. Now I eat four to five times a day because of my schedule, also because of my workouts and particular foods that I eat. I eat a lot of veggies, which are digested pretty quickly, and shakes constitute half of my eating regimen. So that gives me a specific algorithm as to how my overall system works. Now I could not eat um, four times a day if every meal was steak and potatoes or chicken and pasta, something heavy like that. Also, your body becomes accustomed to your eating habits. So if you decide with conviction to eat once a day, your metabolism will, will adjust what's called your BMR or basal metabolic rate and slow everything down so that it uses what it needs at the moment and then it stores the rest for later. Now sometimes that's a problem, sometimes not. But again, your intake output algorithm dictates how your body works, meaning how much you eat and how much energy you expend. You should eliminate or poop as many times or technically one less the amount of times you eat in a day. If you eat twice a day, you should poop twice, counting your rising elimination. And on the next rising, you should finish the previous day cycle if you don't finish it the day before or if you don't finish it on that same day rather. So if you eat three times a day, you should be on the toilet twice a day and once in the rising. If you eat and you go to bed, the first thing that you should want to do in the rising is hit the bidet. If you eat late at night and you don't pull until the next day, like in the afternoon or later on that next day, your system is sluggish. The body will not continue the cycle of converting food matter into waste until the first cycle has been completed. That's why you're not hungry when you get constipated. The best way to really detox is to stay simple and be patient. First you have to eat right or you're wasting your time. I don't know how many consultations I've had where people have told me that they don't eat vegetables at all. I don't see how you guys do it. Veggies are the first line of defense because almost all veggies have cellulose. Cellulose cannot be broken down by the human digestive system. So it acts as a brush in the GI tract and it helps push chyme or chyme through the colon and out the body. Chyme being the uh, partially digested denatured food matter. Now I personally do a veggie fast, but I keep it simple, right? For one or two days, I eat as much red cabbage and or Asian vegetable mix uh, as I can in a sitting. Flash fried in coconut amino, which is like a soy sauce, okay? So it's like a stir fry, basically. I take lemon juice straight by itself, not with the meal, but in between the meals. I take lemon juice two to three times a day, straight. But in addition to that, I'll take two to three eight ounce glasses of water, add lemon juice, stevia, and a little coconut water, about four ounces. Coconut water is very, very helpful when fasting. Very helpful, especially if you sort of get weak. It will really stave that off. I also take hot lemon and cayenne teas as well. And I use this to open up my lymphatic system. And I actually do this first. Now I used to have to fast like this, for two days to see green veg uh, to see green veggies in the bidet, but now it only takes one day, maybe one and a half, and I know everything is scrubbed clean to that point. Okay, when you go and you start to see green in the toilet, you know things are going straight through. Now on the days that I eat nothing, I still take the lemon juice and the lemon cayenne tea with cayenne pepper and lemon juice. I don't do the coconut water on non-food fast because it has, you know, the coconut water has a few calories 
and I like to go into ketosis whenever I fast to recharge my fat burning mechanisms. But whatever you do, you can measure the results by how you feel and what it ends up in the toilet. So until next time, peace. If you learned from this video, help support the study in time to bring this knowledge to our community. It does take time and effort to be concise and as accurate as possible so that we can stay abreast of important health information and techniques. Please visit the site and follow these links.